Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, the living God. If these videos bless you or encourage you, I ask that you just, you know, subscribe if you want and share so that uh, people in the body of Christ can be blessed all over <clears throat> uh, because God does what he does with each individual piece and he gives more to some and less to some in certain areas. Certain people are very, very, very crucial and very, uh, very excellent in their prayer life, I should say. And some people are very good in their knowledge about God. Some people are very good in their discernment, right? Now, obviously, this is just like a, a team, like a basketball team, football team, or any sports team. One person is like a really good shooter. One person's a really good defender. One person's really good at offense. And another person's really good at being quick, right? So the, just same, same with the body of Christ. Even though we all have access to the same God, the same scriptures, uh, you know, obviously, like, depending on your situation, physical situation, you might not have access to the physical word of God. <clears throat> you might have only word to digital, right? Um, <clears throat> but long story short, uh, what I'm going to be talking about today is how Seventh-day Adventists, their doctrine, not their doctrine per se, but the emphasis, just as every denomination, which is just another word for separation, like every, um, every Christian that kind of divides themselves and goes over here and says, no, nah, we are this group or we are that group, uh, they have certain emphasis that are, um, that are good, and then there's certain ones that are just like, ah, I don't know if that's the whole point. Today specifically is Seventh-day Adventist, the emphasis on keeping the Sabbath is a little too much. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about like the extreme ones that like, you know, yeah, you can't do anything. You can't turn on your car. You can't you can't turn on the microwave. You can't turn on the TV. You can't get on your phone because these things have electricity, right? Electricity is also like fire right and you can't even do you can't kindle a fire on the sabbath right so these things you cannot do so you can't start your car because it has the spark plugs you know which does that you can't be, turn on the stove you can't turn on your phone you can't even turn on the tv right like there's obviously some extreme ones <clears throat> i'm not talking about those so much i'm talking about the general uh the general one where uh they will emphasize the Sabbath a lot. And some will even say it's a, it's a salvation issue. Some will, some will go as far as to say, like, you're not a Christian if you don't keep the Sabbath, right? Which, which leads to the point of now the focus has turned from Jesus to the Sabbath, right? Like, if Sabbath is coming more, if, if Sabbath is more passionate if, if you get lit, if you burn up inside with passion because there's another fellow person that follows Christ that keeps the Sabbath more than somebody that comes to you and says, I follow Christ and period. There's, you know, you see what I'm saying? There's like a, maybe you need to refocus because it's about Jesus, right? It's about Jesus. I know that keeping the Sabbath has blessings upon it. Right. Like it's, it's not something that I'm saying is is meaningless and is useless. Kind of like. Um, how would I say like eating healthier has benefits to it. Now, you don't have to. You can still live a life and eat unhealthy. Right. But when you when you eat healthy, it it helps you a little bit. You know, it helps you think clear. It helps you, you know, uh, uh, go through life having more energy, whatever else. Right. So, so, so there's, there's that part, right? Sabbath, kind of keep that in mind as well. It's kind of like that, right? Where um, you see that it, if you keep the Sabbath, there's benefits to it because now you're consciously resting. So scientifically speaking, it's good for your work life, right? Because you you've been working maybe for five days and then 
And then really people work for like every single day because your brain is always going, always going. Whether, you, whether you're sleeping or not, your brain literally is always going. Your heart is always pumping, right? Your body's always moving wherever you're going to. Obviously, these are all Lord willing and to your physical and mental capacity, right? And sound mindness. But what I'm saying is like when you work, right? When you work and you have, and, and, and you have the, the one day that you, that you uh, keep separated solely for God. I mean, like all day you're reading scripture, you're, you're praising God, you're basically having church literally all day, right? You're not working, you're not thinking about the world's things, you're not cooking, you're not, because everything takes energy. Like it's, it's so baffling. Sometimes it sounds tedious how I break things down, but it's true in a sense of like, like you deciding to literally raise your hand and turn off your alarm or raise your finger and press the button to watch a video on YouTube, mine or whatever video, or, or take out the trash or wash the dish or put on your shoes or put on your shirt or go to walk to get the remote. Those, those decisions take, take energy, right? So now, now when, you, when you have something that is more costly in energy, just like if you drove five hours for a car, it takes a lot more gas than if you drove 30 seconds, right? Same thing. Now, if you go to work, that's a lot more costly. Now, depending on your work, it's way more costly than others. But going to work in however fashion you do, getting rides, driving there, or, or taking the bus or whatever, taking the train, whatever way you get to work, or even waking up and working on your computer at home or whatever it is, or, or going to physically do something, right? It, it costs a little bit more um, depending on what you're doing, right? Like doctors have a huge stress on their life because the things they do can kill someone. Like, listen, the things they do can have a life or death altering decision on someone. And that's not just affecting them, that's affecting that person and their life will now be gone if the surgery doesn't go well or if it's some, and if they're loved by other people, they will also be, um, they will also be affecting other people, families, people that care for them, things like that. They will be affected as well, right? So this is this is what I mean by like some some jobs, like cashiering has has a has a stress toll on you if you have like a billion people in line and you don't and you're understaffed or something, right? Or or you might go to what whatever it is. I'm just explaining that different jobs have different uh, tasks that take more or less out of you. If you're dealing with humans, it might be emotionally or mentally draining, right? Not physically. If you're working with wood or lumber or construction or something where you're lifting things a lot in a warehouse, that's physically draining, right? Which also leads into the other ones, the mental and all that stuff. So what I'm saying is, if you take a one day rest, like a straight up actual one day rest, where you're not thinking about those things and you're only thinking about God, it has its benefits. And I'm not saying this is the this this is this is something bad. What I'm saying is that despite the benefits from it, it's emphasized over Jesus sometimes. This is just generally speaking in the, the Seventh day Adventist church, right? And other churches that 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 uh, take take the Sabbath as like the day of the Lord, right? Did God not make every day? Did he not make every day? I just bleeped. <laughs> Did God not create Monday as well? Well, you know, it, it, I'm not even getting into like the, the, the Monday, moon day, the Sunday, the Sunday, the, you know, the Jupiter. No, nah, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about the days of the week that most people refer to as the Sunday through Saturday, whatever, first day, second day, all the way to the seventh day. Did God not make all of those? So why is one day special over another? I'm not discounting what God did and setting the seventh day apart. I'm saying the emphasis on the seventh day goes a little too far sometimes. That's what I'm saying. Because if somebody comes to the extreme and says, if you do not keep the Sabbath, you are not a real Christian. That right there, my friend, is dangerous because it's not what I do that makes me a Christian. What I do is the evidence that I'm a Christian, right? God Almighty 
makes you a Christian by baptizing you in the Holy Spirit and fire. So now, if somebody assumes that I'm not a Christian because I don't keep the Sabbath, they're saying, oh, well, even though the Holy Spirit is inside of you, God Almighty is inside of you, you don't keep the Sabbath. So whatever the Holy Spirit has done to born you again doesn't actually count because you don't keep the Sabbath. Now you're calling God a liar. This is serious. This is very serious. That's why I have to build a little bit before it, right? People are overemphasizing the Sabbath. They're getting more proud of people keeping the Sabbath than being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Listen, this is a super serious thing. I keep the Sabbath. I don't mind about that. But when the Sabbath becomes the indication that you're a Christian or, or the indication that you're truly following God, th no, look, listen. Listen, tax collectors followed God. Prostitutes followed God. Jesus drank wine and he was the son of the living God. And then someone will come to someone else. I'm not saying all people are. I'm not saying all Seventh-day Adventists, you know, because a lot of them are very learned. You know, they're, they're, you know, they show the fruits of the spirit and things like that. And they don't overemphasize where they don't have to. Right. I'm not saying these things. I'm saying for for the ones for the young one that might, you know, he be so passionate in keeping the Sabbath ah! you, like, yo, slow down. It has more to do with Jesus than the Sabbath. Right. When Jesus says like like the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Right. Because the, the Pharisees, they were so overemphasizing. You have to give Sabbath. It's like, oh, why are you healing on the Sabbath? Why are you doing good on the Sabbath? Why are you doing this on the Sabbath? Why are you doing that on the Sabbath? He's like, wow, Sabbath, Sabbath, Sabbath. Do you guys not know that it's about Jesus, not the Sabbath? Listen. Listen. And, and, and then some people, you know, obviously, you know, theological debates, theological uh, answers being brought up and things like that. Like for Lutherans, for example, you, you might, a Lutheran will hear like um, probably a question more often than like more this question more often than the Seventh-day Adventist would if, if they knew a little bit about Lutherans, right? Because Lutherans, they emphasize the love of God. They don't talk so much about the wrath of God, right? They don't really emphasize the gifts of God, like the Pentecost do. And the wrath of God is more like the Baptist, right? And and the 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 law of God is more. Oh, the law of God is more like uh, uh, Hebrew Israelites and and you know Seventh Day Adventists and things like that, right? So Lutherans will hear, oh, if God loves you so much, how come He sends people to hell? That's probably a question they will they will hear more often than not, right? Just generally speaking. So they emphasize the love of God a lot, but like fail to, I guess, um, balance it out. What I'm saying is that in the denominations or separations that has happened amongst the Christian people, one group will really, 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 really emphasize one thing and lack emphasis in another thing. But in totality, in what I'm to completely holistically saying, is that the denominations will have some good emphasis and, and, and not so emphasize other things. And they will be lacking in a balanced, balanced view of the word of God and, and, and the law of God and the love and justice and mercy and wrath and jealousy and, and anger and, and kindness and patience of God and, and how God is and how the Christian life should be. Catholics will emphasize works, right? Works and faith, right? So you, you can go on and on and on, but what I'm ultimately saying is that a large portion of the Seventh-day Adventist church is unbalanced in its view of the law and the Sabbath. Because if you, as it says in the New Testament, are you are trying to keep the law. Like you can't keep the law and then 
it's okay. It's very similar to this. Before I even bring up, okay, I'll bring up the scripture first. My bad. It says like you can't like choose to keep one part of the law but not be obligated to keep the whole thing. It's either grace or truth, or it's either grace or the law, right? You you choose to keep the Sabbath. You are not going to turn on your phone, your TV. You're not going to. Uh, you, you're, you're not going to cause other people to work for you So you can't go buy food somewhere else And have them do it You can't turn on your car You can't turn, you can't turn on your microwave You can't turn on your stove you, uh, Like no work, nothing, right? Like literally nothing That's why the, the Pharisees were on Jesus' head Like, bro, what are you doing? You're working right now You're working on the Sabbath Stop, 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 right? They would basically like just nag them all day like, oh my goodness, like, you're doing this on the Sabbath. Why are you doing that on the Sabbath? You're, you're supposed to keep the law. And you say you're the son of God. Right? So, like, like literally, these things were, like, arguments they had. Like, arguments. Like, for real. Because they, they kept the Sabbath that closely. Right? And, it, and, and, and if, if you're going to keep the Sabbath, you need to keep all the other pieces of the law. Dead serious. For real. For real. You need to keep everything. You need to start killing killing uh, lambs for the sake of, you know, for the sake of your sins, unblemished. You need to, you, you need to have the, the priest, the robe, the, the, the thing sprinkling, uh, the everything, the fire, burn this, burn that, cut it in a certain way. Everything, everything. You need to keep everything. I'm serious. That might sound like, oh, no, this guy's just going off. No, for real. Listen, it's, it's kind of like doing this. Oh, I'm going to marry this person, but I'm not going to marry their family. What? 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 Oh, I'm going to have kids, but I'm only going to feed them in the morning. If, if they don't get fed at night. Oh, okay. You know, what? I'm, I'm going to do my homework, but I'm only going to do about half of it. And, and I'm going to expect an A. What? Listen, you obligate yourself to one part of the law. You are you're obligated to hold yourself to the entirety of the law. So don't come as a Seventh-day Adventist and say, I keep the Sabbath, but Jesus will fulfill the rest that I don't keep. What? That doesn't make it... What? What? Listen. Oh, I'm, I'm going to take care of the oil, but I'm not going to ever change the tires of the car. What? What do you mean? What do you mean? You're gonna, you're, what? Come on, come on. No, listen. It doesn't make any sense. Come on, listen. Listen, okay? You can't say, you, oh, well, I, uh, I love my teacher. But I'm only going to go to class when they teach this this part of, of of the of the subject of the class. Well, why? Why do you expect to 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 get a passing grade if you're only going to show up once a week? Let's say you're in high school. Ah, well, I'm only going to show up to that class once a week, you know. But yeah, no, it doesn't work like that. You marry somebody, you're marrying the entire family. I don't care who you are or what you believe. When you're uncle-in-law, brother-in-law, whoever in-law comes, you are also in-law. They've now become your in, they're now related to you through the law of marriage. Come on, folks. It's not, it's not rocket science. Listen, you keep the Sabbath, you need to start killing lambs today. Like, I'm serious. People say, oh, that's extreme. Well, the Bible says, if you want to keep one part of the law, but you think you can't keep the rest, you're wrong. You got to go to grace or or the law. That's it. This is, this is not... People overthink it. Oh, well, no, that's getting to this. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. So what I'm saying is... God Almighty... God Almighty... Is good. And certain people have separated themselves and says, we believe in this of the Bible more than you do, but we don't believe in this as much. There needs to be a balance, a balance with everything of the gifts of the spirit. 
the law of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, the justice of God, the way a Christian should live, the, 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 the Christian life in its holisticness. People talk about money a lot and then they say, oh, well, you know, it's a prosperity gospel. It's in the Bible for you to have something to give to your children. I think it's in Proverbs. Like a good man gives to his children's children or something like that. How can you give if you don't have anything you worked for? It says in Proverbs, like the diligent hand, it, it grows rich, right? So you, you, need, to, you need to leave your, your kids something. Not just like, oh, I'm going to leave them like this one house or I'm going to leave them my car or I'm going to leave them. No, you need to give them something good. Bigger than that. Because you have a whole life to live, right? Because God promised you life. God promised you life if you honor your mother and father. This isn't, this isn't a man saying, oh, I promise, honey, when this happens. Or, oh, I promise, teacher, when I get this. Or I promise when this happens. This is God Almighty promising you these things. So it's there to be prosperous in the Bible. People just overemphasize it and think, oh, you got to sow this seed and then you're going to be prosperous. What? 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 I don't get it. I don't get it. Why isn't it balanced? The law of God is to show you the perfect character and standard of God, right? A schoolmaster, right? A forerunner of Christ, right? The, these things are meant for a reason. Now, when, when certain churches emphasize the Sabbath and the law, and will go as far as saying, some will go as far as saying, you can't even make it to heaven if you don't keep the Sabbath. Even in heaven, we're going to still keep the Sabbath. Is it not about Jesus? I thought it's about Jesus, not just the law, right? It's about Jesus, right? So if you get happier hearing somebody keeps the Sabbath than somebody follows Jesus, that's kind of a yellow flag, not a red flag, but a yellow flag. Like, you know, okay, maybe you should be careful and back off on the importance of keeping the Sabbath. It's not a salvation issue. Because if it was a salvation issue, some of the characters in the Bible would not have gone to heaven if it was a salvation issue. Salvation hinges upon belief in Jesus and being baptized in the Holy Spirit alone. That's it. If you are not baptized, you will not be saved. Listen, this is, man, nobody knows when they will die too. That's, that's why I'm always so urgent. Jesus is the only salvation issue. No man comes to the Father but by him. Nothing about the Sabbath. I'm not saying it's not important. Very similar to what I said earlier. If you keep healthy foods going into your stomach and in your mouth and ingesting it, you'll have benefits to it. If you don't, you'll still live. You can still eat McDonald's every day and you will be alive just as I am. I just feel healthier. I just feel like more energy and whatnot. That's it. That's it. But you're still alive just as I am. Jesus is the only way to the Father. Jesus came that we might have salvation. So listen, right? This is literally the only thing. Now, if you keep the Sabbath... Sure. Now, don't keep it just so you're like, oh, yeah, you know, I have to keep the Sabbath because, uh, you know, I got to do all these things and then God will accept me and then I'll be blessed. You're blessed because Jesus. It's just like icing on the cake. It's just, it's, it all, it's like extra blessings, right? Which is not a bad thing. Some people will genuinely keep the feast days, not because they have to, but because they, they, they want to set that time apart for God. It's not, it's not a bad thing. Now, now the focus is still Jesus. The, when you're keeping the Sabbath, for those who keep the Sabbath and, and keep some of the feast days, the focus is still Jesus, but it's not something you have to do. It's not a salvation thing. You could literally never keep the Sabbath ever or any of the feast days in your entire life. And you'll be sitting right there with Jesus when you pass away. Literally. 
because it's Jesus alone. No man shall come to the Father except by him. No one shall receive the Holy Spirit except Jesus asks the Father and the Father says yes. That's it. That's it. Has nothing to do with keeping the Sabbath or not. Has nothing to do with that. Like I said, it's just an icing on the cake. So what I'm saying is that Seventh-day Adventists have an overemphasis. And not, not just them. Like in other uh, um, parts of, of Christianity that broke off into their own kind of little thing. They also overemphasize the Sabbath and the law and things like that. With, without, without like, you know, with, and it's unbalanced. That's really what my main point is just unbalanced. It's not a salvation issue. Because if it was, why would the Pharisees not make it to heaven? <laughs> they kept the Sabbath better than anyone else. All right, listen, it's not a salvation issue. It's a Jesus thing. The focus is just too great upon these things. That's really all I'm saying. This is just a loving warning. A, not really a warning, just a loving message and a reminder saying, hey, it's okay. It's okay. The focus is Jesus. Nothing else really will trump Jesus. I probably shouldn't say Trump. No, well, I, in the actual sense, nothing shall override Jesus when it comes to importance. Loving your neighbor as yourself cannot be done unless you go to Jesus. Then you can truly love your neighbor as yourself when you see how Jesus loved his neighbor as himself. It's, it's not hard. It's, it's not difficult to understand. It's just a lot of people, their pride and self-righteousness and, and whatever inside of them. That, well, I grew up this way and I believe this and I believe that. Well, then that's very similar to what the Pharisees did. They held on to God and the tradition of man at the same time. What did Jesus say? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things will be added unto you. He doesn't say keep the... the like, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and also keep your self-pride and all these other things and whatever you experience and whatever you grew up with. And then all these things will be added unto you. Is Jesus and Jesus alone, right? And then when you press more into God, you will understand the things. And I, of course, like I always say, cross-reference what I say. These things are, I was mainly speaking ideas. I wasn't really telling you scriptures today. But cross-reference what I say. Go back and read these things. Go back and study diligently so that you know what I'm saying is true. And I try to keep an, as open as possible and being, un and being unbiased, but that's almost impossible because we're, we're human and we have our experiences, the way we grew up and all that stuff. So by default, I'm biased in certain ways, right? Like when I hear people preaching, they might have had like the best sermon ever. But I was like, man, why didn't they explain it like this? Why didn't they explain it like that? And I'm going to my own head like, oh, man, like they could have said it like this, like this. But that's just my own like thoughts and how I think and how I want them to, to tell me. But I, I don't have any control of what God brought them through, Right. So when, when I say these things, I'm saying it out of love and saying, yo, listen, the focus has to be on Jesus, right? Not, not anything else, because once you focus on Jesus, then the things you need to focus on, they will come to be, right? Then, then, then you'll see why keeping the Sabbath is just like eating healthy. You can still eat healthy and unhealthy and still live. You'll just feel better when you when you eat healthy. You, you'll have more blessings. Well, not more blessings, I should say. You'll have certain blessings when you keep the Sabbath, right? And you keep the feast days. It's not required. Now, this is this might be for someone in the season where they're they're really going ham. They they want to seek God's face. So they will try to keep the Sabbath and all these things in focusing on God, not this actual day. Not the, the works that they're doing, but they say, okay, I need some way somehow to, to, to get deeper into God. Okay, well, let me see in the scriptures. Oh, well, fasting is the thing that they did. All right, I'm going to fast. Okay, what, what other thing? They, they kept the Sabbath. Okay, I'm, I'm going to keep the Sabbath. They also kept the feast days. Okay, I'm going to keep the feast days. What were the reasons for the feast days? Oh, this day was the day, the, the Passover, when, 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 when the angel passed over the, the, 
the 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 Hebrews or the the Israelites door of with the lamb posted on it so the firstborn wouldn't die. Okay, I need to remember these things. So I'm here to remember how the angel of death passed over uh, the people of God so they wouldn't die, but they would live because the blood lamb was there. What does that res what does that resemble? Jesus. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna remember Jesus. Okay. Let me think of how else they got closer to God. Well, the, every time they broke the bread and drank the wine, they were remembering Jesus in the new covenant. Let me do those things. But the focus is still on Jesus and getting closer to God while he is near, right? It's not just, well, I'm going to keep the Sabbath and I'm going to keep these because we have to. Who's, who, who said we, so we have to keep these things or else we're going to hell? No. If we have to keep those things, Jesus, his mission was just half of the mission then. Then you're just getting into works. Then it would be grace and works, which doesn't make sense because now you're, Basically saying God's what you what God's work what you did it wasn't enough so I need to do something what what listen 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 right some people shall go in these seasons but not everyone will go through the same season for me specifically I read the Bible for hours a day sometimes for for a few months I went to a lot of Bible studies. I researched the Bible. I watched thousands of hours of videos, sermons, explanations, and things like that throughout the years, right? I read huge portions of the Bible. I, uh, I, like, I would pray, right? This is what God had me go through. Now, if God has you saying, you need to go and keep the Sabbath so that you can get closer to me, by all means, God Almighty bless you and you keep the Sabbath. For the sake that you'll grow closer to God, not because you have to keep it, but it presents benefits to you and closer to God and remembrance of what he's done for you. Remembrance. The feast days, they have specific things that happen. That's why God said, this shall be a day. This shall be a week. This shall be two days. This shall be five days. This shall be 11 days of whatever that I have brought you through. You need to just sit and just rest for these, for these days right here, right? And then every week you need to rest for this day. And then, out. but when the focus is on that more than it like, when it's like, you need to keep the Sabbath, you need to keep the feast, you need to keep this, you need to keep that. Who said we need to do anything? This is salvation that you know the one true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That is salvation. That is what you need. That is all that you need. But now if God says, I need you to go to this church and I need you to like go and just talk to, get close to that body of church, right? Get close to that body. And then all of a sudden, blessings start flowing from it. I need you to go here and I need you to minister to this person because that's going to help minister to you because you might have a similar story, right? And while you're, while you're helping someone else, God is helping you working on whatever's going on inside, right? I need you to go encourage this person because it's going to encourage you, right? Whatever God has for you, I need you to leave your things and I need you to go to this unknown country and I'm going to show you where to go, right? Whatever God has for you, it doesn't, it's not always the same. Like so, somebody, everyone has different body types, right? So if somebody comes in playing basketball and they're like 6'6", six, six, versus somebody that comes and they're like 6'3", you're going to have to treat them differently, right? And, and, and not like by, like whatever it is. I mean like this person's going to have to come and they're going to have to uh, like, they're going to have to, they might be a point guard, right? And then this person might be a better shooter, so... Even if they're like six five, right? The ideal point guard height. They 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 might be told, I need you to go be do this, do this, and then go and shoot and stuff, you know. But then this person might be the ideal everything, right? But okay, we, I know you're really good at defending, but we need you to be on this side of the thing. Or in football, I, I know you're really good at um, you know being a running back, but I need you to be this right now, right? So you're not always going to use every single talent that you have. I know somebody might be a really good artist or somebody might be a really good uh, speaker or somebody might be a really good uh, encourager or whatever, but God has you somewhere else, right? 
Same with all these things. God might have you keep the feast days for a little bit because I did that for a little bit. God might have you read the Bible every day for like three hours, whatever it is, right? God might have you praise him in your car for multiple hours every day, whatever it is that God has for you. But just remember, Seventh-day Adventists and all those who are watching that are um, or those that keep the feast days and keep the Sabbath and things like that. The focus is always Jesus. More so than the focus being on um, more so than the focus being on um, the actual feast day or Sabbath itself. So I just wanted to send out that loving reminder, right? It's all about Jesus.